A sentence I never thought I'd say, and that many of you likely never thought you'd hear, for the first time ever, a former president of the United States has been indicted by a New York State grand jury. The indictment was handed down in the Manhattan DA case regarding Trump's hush money payouts to Stormy Daniels, a crime for which Trump's own lawyer, Michael Cohen, had gone to prison, and yet, despite the fact that that crime was committed at the direction of and for the benefit of Donald Trump, he'd managed to evade accountability until today. At this point, Trump's lawyers have already come out and said that in the event of an indictment, he would turn himself in, likely with the express purpose of depriving everyone of a photo of a perp walk. Because while Trump might be content to traffic in a perpetual state of victimhood, even he knows that his sense of martyrdom has its limits. Those limits being a photo of him in handcuffs plaguing him for the rest of his life. Trump will now almost assuredly be released upon being booked. After that, there will be an arraignment. The judge in the case will likely set a series of interim status hearings to lay out which motions they'll want to file. From there, there will be motions hearings where they'll be able to call witnesses, and then a trial date will be set, most likely within six months to a year. So if you're worried about things moving too quickly to be able to follow, you've got time. Now, knowing that his indictment was imminent, Trump opted to defer to his tried-and-true tactic of inciting violence as some last-ditch effort to deter prosecutors from holding him accountable. He took to Truth Social, posting things like, The far-and-away leading Republican candidate and former president of the United States of America will be arrested on Tuesday of next week. Protest, take our nation back. And we can't just allow this anymore. They're killing our nation as we sit back and watch. We must save America. Protest, protest, protest. And of course, having plenty of experience now at inciting riots, Trump was seeking to do it again. And because he is as discreet as a hurricane, law enforcement had already begun working on security preparations in the event that he, of course, summons a mob. Now, when we are learning that the Manhattan DA's office has asked for a meeting with law enforcement ahead of a potential Trump indictment. This is coming to Fox News from a source in the courts. The meeting, which was requested yesterday and has not been set yet, is to discuss logistics for some time next week, which would mean that they are anticipating an indictment next week. The same source who's familiar with the planning said they will go over security preparations in and around the courthouse in lower Manhattan. Secret Service will take the lead in what they will allow or will not allow. The source cautioned, mentioning, for instance, that the decision to handcuff the president, a former president, or not. They will set the tone and will escort him into the courtroom. There will be coordination between all of us, the source said, but we will defer to the Secret Service. The battle will be, be between Secret Service and DA Alvin Bragg. They will decide how and when He'll get into the building and they are not going to leave him. The source believes that the former president will still have to be fingerprinted and processed like every other defendant. So um, this is a huge development. And just as a quick aside, for any Trump apologist out there who still maintains that it was never Trump's intention to incite an insurrection on January 6th, you can throw that right out the window. The fact that he's called for yet another protest in New York, even after having the knowledge in retrospect of what happens when he summons his supporters to avenge him, is all the proof you need that the violence was the point. Maybe he had plausible deniability the first time, but not the second. If you summon a mob again, armed with the knowledge that the last time that ended with the U.S. Capitol under siege, then you don't get to pretend that you want peace. For Trump, the violence was the point then, and the violence is clearly the point now. And the goal, per usual, is to try and bend the law to his will. He thinks that by virtue of threatening violence and chaos, that'll somehow redound to his benefit, somehow help him escape accountability. Although at this point, and I think I can say this with 100% certainty for the first time ever, his last-ditch effort isn't going to work, and he won't be able to get away with it. But it really is telling that this guy, who literally took an oath to defend the United States of America, has now not once, but twice, sought to stoke the flames of domestic terror and violence, both times solely to defend himself. On January 6th, he sought to pressure Pence into illegally declaring him the winner of an election that he lost, and now he's seeking to pressure prosecutors into not holding him accountable for his own criminal activity. The notion that this person ever cared about anyone other than Donald Trump is, at best, an absolute joke. And let's be perfectly clear about one thing here. While Trump will throw his tantrums and cry victim and summon his mobs and pretend the whole world is out to get him, let's not forget that no one forced him to do any of this. 
No one forced him into making illegal campaign contributions to Stormy Daniels to keep their affair quiet so it wouldn't hurt his chances of running for office. Just like no one asked him to call Georgia's Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger to tell him to conjure up 11,780 votes that didn't exist for the express purpose of winning an election that he lost. No one asked him to steal classified documents from the White House and lie about having already returned them. No one asked him to falsify business records and issue false financial statements and engage in insurance fraud in New York. No one asked him to incite a mob to storm the U.S. Capitol. He did all of those things on his own. So if he's being prosecuted now, Trump has no one to blame but himself. And it never does get old that I have to explain that to the leader of a party that brands itself the party of personal responsibility. It would almost be funny if it wasn't so pathetic. And while we're on the topic of pathetic, a number of Trump apologists have come out in staunch defense of their leader, but none more pathetic than Mike Pence, who, thanks to Donald Trump himself, was nearly assassinated the last time Trump summoned a mob to do his bidding. Pence had this to say. The idea of indicting a former president of the United States is deeply troubling to me as it is to tens of millions of Americans, and particularly happening in what appears to be a politically charged environment in New York where the Attorney General and other elected officials literally campaigned on a pledge to prosecute the but former the president. Guys, guys. I did mention that the guy he's defending was about 40 feet away from having him killed, right? I did? Okay, just making sure. Kevin McCarthy took to Twitter writing, Here we go again, an outrageous abuse of power by a radical DA who lets violent criminals walk as he pursues political vengeance against President Trump. I'm directing relevant committees to immediately investigate if federal funds are being used to subvert our democracy by interfering in elections with politically motivated prosecutors. In other words, Trump issues a call to arms, and the first thing that Kevin McCarthy does is try to stop an independent prosecution of his boss, all the while overseeing a weaponization of government committee because up is down and left is right and nothing means anything anymore. And of course, Marjorie Taylor Greene also sprinted to Trump's side. And if they indict President Trump on fake charges to go after him to try to stop the, the movement that they cannot stop, he is going to win 2024 in a landslide victory. And then we'll put him in the White House and he will finish what he started. We will gut the government of all the traitors that are serving the globalists in America last. And I just want to touch on this idea that was surfaced by Green, this idea that a Trump indictment would guarantee a Trump landslide. And here's the thing. We were told that after Trump's impeachment, and yet he went on to lose re-election. We were told that after the FBI executed a search warrant at Mar-a-Lago, and yet Trump's America First candidates went on to get crushed in the midterms. In other words, Every time one of these Trump acolytes promises us that some modicum of accountability will lead to some inevitable Trump resurgence, the opposite ends up happening. So while these people will continue to believe that there's some massive contingent of Trump loyalists out there just waiting to mobilize to defend his honor the moment he's wronged, it turns out that's just wish casting on the part of some pretty deluded Republicans. The simple fact is that Americans have broadcast over and over and over that they're not interested in buying what Trump is selling. They're not interested in the extremism, in the corruption, in the self-dealing, or in the lies. They have shown us that in 2018, in 2020, in 2022, and I have no doubt that they'll show it again if they need to in 2024. So Republicans can stay lost in their little bubbles wherein they continue to sprint to the right to appeal to some dwindling faction of extremists that compose their base, but they've lost the rest of the country while doing so. So while they view Trump as a martyr because he's being held accountable for his own actions, the rest of us see him for exactly what he is, a criminal, one who finally and for the first time in the history of this country is beginning to face the accountability that he deserves.